All right, Bone Honks, this video is all about the Bone Honk Podcast. We are back again with episode two, and this week we are talking to Hater, who has jumped back into Combat League for the first time ever, about what kind of things to expect if maybe you haven't been in there in a while, what kind of things are happening in there at different levels, and all that kind of stuff that goes into it mentally. So we're going into that. We're going also into our Combat Pack 2 wish list as we're nearing over the halfway mark of the first Combat Pack. So let me know what you think about there. And then as well, Hater's got a fun game that I won't spoil for you, uh, but play along. There's a little bit of a spoiler on screen here uh, that you might not piece together until after the fact. But yeah, that being said, let's get into it. <laughs> Accept your death. And welcome back to episode two of the Bonehawk podcast. We have a lot to go over today and a lot of new and fun things that I think everyone uh, will enjoy. As always, joined by Hater. Hater, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. As always, we are going to start out with some comments from last week's podcast. So if you have anything that you might want to be featured, uh, feel free to leave some comments down below and we'll pick the ones that we think are most relevant or ones that, uh, you know, glaring questions that might need to be answered. So we'll start with, uh, how do I pronounce this? Adolf Billick, 8622. Sorry if I absolutely butchered that. This game I feel should be me measured in teams. For example, Natar and Chameleon is an extremely dangerous team in the right hands as they gel so well, movement, damage, and mix-ups. One, the scariest characters to face in the game when she is played properly. So few know how to use her full potential, but she's very scary in the right hands. And that's, I feel like that's a really, really tough thing to do. And I feel like eventually down the road, that might be how tier lists are done. But there's just so many different combinations of things that I don't know if we can even say that, you know, that's everything's fleshed out. Like I'm just, I'm seeing some stuff with like Sub-Zero and Darius that I never would have even thought to, to try. And yeah, just like weird combinations that I didn't think with Tanya Mataro is another one that's come out of the woodwork. So I feel like, although I do agree with your premise, I feel like that we don't know the game well enough to actually make tier lists like that. What do you think, Hater? Am I, do you think I'm on the right track here? Do you think we should be doing it by teams? That would be a big tier list though, right? Cause you'd have like Natar on there like 15 times with each different cameo. Well, every character on there have times the entire roster times however many cameos they are i think it's fair to consider their best cameo i feel like so i was watching king gambler a little bit earlier today and he was talking about his tier list that he does not want to post on twitter he doesn't want the twitter dialogue he wanted to just talk about it on stream where you know there could be a discussion about it people right. could ask him questions about placements and things like that and he definitely considers teams and he was talking about specifically because he has like Tanya at number one, because Tanya Goro is, and that's a lot of, uh, at high level, these sorts of tier lists by the like super competitive players. Yeah. A lot of them have Tanya at, at that same spot. Armored launchers plus on block. Um, it, it's what fits the meta right now. And even For though, sure. and people come back and they say, how is she so much higher than she was just like a couple months ago? Like, and literally nothing changed about her. And it's like, well, as the other characters change around here and the meta shifts and people adapt to that, that's why you see, like, huge swings with, like, no change. A character goes from mid-tier to top-tier with literally no changes to themselves just by what's happening around them, you know? That that sort of thing. So I think you can only make tier lists based on the current meta. We can't predict the future and know how the game's going to hash out. So I don't see any problems, personally, with considering the the most common syner, synergist, synergizing teams, right? The really synergistic stuff. I think it's absolutely fair to consider them. Uh, the ones that we know are strong, for sure. That seems... Right. Seems... Yeah. And uh, I Based don't Based on what we see, that. the evidence of what we see happening, right? Yeah. And, and like you said, it's she is a product of other things being pushed down, some other things being pushed up, and she just ended up being the one that... Uh, kind of at the top of the heap. And I feel like that's always going to happen. Things are going to change. Something's going to get buffed, nerfed, whatever. And then uh, the game, I won't, don't think will get fully fleshed out almost really ever. Like even when like changes stop happening, people are still like, look at MK 11, how long that went without any updates or anything. And the, the meta was completely different from 
the last patch until the last tournament that the, the Look game at the had. way that MKX, the quote unquote necro era, right? How much yeah, differently totally. they were playing those characters that we'd moved on from or the 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 main player base had uh, moved on from over to Injustice 2. Yeah, and, there's... and just how they and then it happened again in Injustice 2 and everyone was playing MK11 and then a new meta <laughs> right. started developing as people continue to play that game and people are always finding new things. And games are always evolving. So it's you just got to try and keep up as best you can if you care about that kind of stuff. So appreciate yeah. the comment. Uh moving on to Elusivez. Uh W podcast. Thank you. Appreciate that. Also, can I ask what your streaming streaming schedule is if you do not have one? When can we expect you to stream next? Um I don't have a schedule per se. Usually every Tuesday at 6.30 I have been streaming. We used to do Injustice Tuesdays, but now I'm ramping up for Combo Breaker. So we're doing the streams of improving and watching ourselves back as we play. So that's probably one day I'd say it's pretty much guaranteed unless I'm traveling or something. Uh, but most of the time I just stream when I get some time. I'm you know, a dad and I work a full-time job and then I'm doing this on top of all of that. So I don't always know if I'll be able to stream, but when I do, it's usually between 8 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Eastern time, usually towards the later part of that because I get off work at 5.30 Pacific and then, you know, an hour to get home and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, if you make sure you have your notifications on, you'll uh, you'll get that nice little, uh, little bing whenever I do go live. And on days where I know that I can go live, I'll usually try and schedule it here on YouTube and I'll put that out as much in so advance as I can. you can get a notification just for that. Yeah, you'll get a notification saying in eight hours, you know, I'll be going live. So I do try and give as much notice as I can, but with all the things going on in my life, it's a little hard to schedule it. And I appreciate everyone that sticks around, even with my kind of chaotic schedule as it is. So the two things that seem to be guaranteed right now are the Tuesdays and trying to get the Bone Punk podcast out every weekend. So those are Dang, two that's guaranteed ambitious. things. Hey, I'm an, I'm an ambitious man. You know, I haven't had a schedule since I first started uploading 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Time flies. Jeez. Thanks for that comment. Hopefully a lot of you found that information helpful. Last comment here. Carlos Barr, 8057. Do you miss Cetrion Dink? And the answer to this is a fuck no. Like, yeah, maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Yeah. Boo. Maybe, like, a little bit, like... As a character, I guess, stuff. yeah. But I mean, her gameplay, just MK11's gameplay. Now that we have MK1 with how creative and expressive MK1 is, I don't want to touch MK11 again. Like I thought about going back and like picking up Spawn again and playing Spawn or Shang or whatever. But there's just so much to do in MK1, so many different gameplay possibilities that that game just feels so, so bland. Like down four rock wall, down four rock wall. You know, maybe <laughs> like. Maybe the tornado, right? The tornado, yeah. The tornado. Exactly. Like, I don't miss that at all. Again, character was a neat concept. What? Not the hugest fan of the character. Gameplay was was absolute cheeks. So I don't want to go go back to that again. I don't know if you have any uh, thing to add to that hater, but that's that's kind of where I. Stand. I mean, I didn't play the character, so I feel like your opinion's the one that that matters. I yeah. mean, she, she's okay. I love the idea of her, like, in the story, like, who she is, but I didn't really like her character design, her play style, fighting against her. They could have maybe fleshed out the whole Shinnok sister thing a little bit more. I feel like that was just kind of glossed over, which seemed like kind of a big deal lore-wise to me, but other than that, yeah. She was all right. Yeah. All right, so thanks for your comments, everyone. Feel free to leave something below, and, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, if you have any questions or whatnot, we'll do our best to, to answer them, tag-team them together, so... Moving on from that, uh, I've been trying to yeah. gauge myself a little bit leading up to Combo Breaker by how well I've been doing in Combat League and like mm -hmm. playing that to, I mean, I'm not saying level up because sometimes Combat League can give you some some bad habits, but I know I wanted to talk to you about it, Hater, because you had mentioned that you had returned to Combat League for the first time in how long? Like, I don't even remember you playing a ranked mode since, at MK11 since, once. Since, <laughs> no, I did it just the one time. I didn't, I was, I've always hated ranked. Uh, I hated it in Injustice 2, even like player matches, and a game is still to this day never been, regardless of genres, made me more salty than Injustice 2. Right. Uh, but then I was thinking about this earlier, because um, I had a feeling this was going to to come up, and 
once the MK11 was revealed and I got into the stress test, it's like I've got no choice than to play, you know, <laughs> strangers. I'm too comfortable just playing, you know, friends, right? So that's what kind of like drew me into it. It's just like so ick to me. I don't know what it is about MK ranked compared to like other games. So I tried to like when Street Fighter Six came out, I played a shitload of ranked. When Tekken 8 came out, I played a shitload of ranked. And so I was like, whatever, I'm I just need to get over it. And so I just played a played a bunch today. Yeah. I feel it, there's it's the wild, wild west out there. I feel like Mortal Kombat is just set up for more toxicity than other fighting games, like having the hot mics and the finish them scream when they can just just mash teabag on you the whole time or just fatal blow <laughs> when you really don't or need to whatever. do that so t so today this guy kept taunting so he's doing like the four like doing the the teabag into the taunt thing and then doing his fatality at the last second <laughs> you know like sort of <laughs> yeah. thing like those are things for like the is it is it toxic uh 100%. categories or whatever maybe we'll we'll well, come, so it's important to play Combat League because I need material for this sort of. <laughs> it's those, those it's research. Of it's a, it's a scientific uh, scientific endeavor heading into Combat I actually, League. I, I ran into some like good players, like good sportsmanship sort of things. Right? It wasn't an awful experience. I got one and done. So it was like I was playing Tekken Eight. Like just <laughs> nobody nobody wanted to rematch um, it was really it's kind of frustrating but it's like I feel like they're just frustrated because you see especially because I just started this is the first I've played any ranked in mk1 so I'm at the the bottom and maybe th th this is something I wanted to talk to you about and maybe you'd like bring up in this sort of format right because it yeah. could be helpful for other people out there and it's not meant to be like condescending or give advice where it's not wanted and you can play and enjoy the game like however you want but if it is something that you want to get better at like i think it would be maybe helpful uh to talk about maybe some of the things that you see when you're out there and ranked like really common things where you can see players like they they have the idea right but maybe they're still waking up too much or they're right not adapting or like whatever it is right um especially if you see it like bro every scorpion player or every reptile player that's like how i <laughs> right. feel right now like oh my god every johnny cage holy cow um it's been a day of johnny's let me tell you um, <laughs> he is by far and away the most popular character and ranked at the low levels i think i mean that would make sense he's got some fairly he easy to execute um well, i feel like i've been fighting those two characters all day yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so to your point, for anyone that maybe is, like, not really sure what to expect by going into ranked or, like, as far as, like, gameplay-wise and that kind of stuff, that's, I think that would be a good thing to, to talk on, especially since I, I we're probably at different levels uh, on the tiers as far as, you know, Combat League goes. Not trying to knock you in any way, hater, just know you haven't played as much as me, oh, so the levels no, are different. I have... Man, I have no, I have <laughs> no delusions about the kind of player that I am. So, so in general, in my experience from going through the tiers, um, since the latest update, I've seen a lot more Kenshi, quite a bit more Kenshi than I saw previously. And it wasn't like I never saw him before, but I'm just seeing him quite a bit more now. And I don't know what that looks like at your, the levels that you're at there hater uh if the people are using kenji at that one he can be a little um uh what's the term i want to use execution heavy uh so i'm not sure like if that's a little bit more complex see. right it's a little bit some things that you're forced to learn about him if you want to be good with him he doesn't have like that immediate uh if you want like immediate gratif uh satisfaction you know like play peacemaker or something oh my not god kenji. Yeah, that's that's a that's a character that I don't care what level you're at. You're running into a peacemaker, right. and it is not going to be fun. You're just gonna. All right, it, it's on. If Man, you I, if you lose, I've I've won matches and I'm still salty because I'm just like that was the most ridiculous. Like I had to play so ridiculous yeah. to win that. Like that was. <laughs> I fought I fought one earlier. It's the first time I've ever let the intros go against a peacemaker, and when they do the like intro quote or whatever Melina said to him. And they do the little breakaway for she slashes her size and you go sliding back to create like the neutral space for the beginning of the round. He's like, ow, <laughs> like, he was just, he's so funny. It's yeah. so hard to be mad at him, but he, he at the same time, that's what makes him so fucking frustrating to fight against, know. you know, like you were saying last time, know. you know, like torpedo, <laughs> torpedo, uh, uh, anti-gravity, oh anti-gravity. Yeah. Anyway, so like, what about like, 
So what kind of patterns do you see? People that you feel like are like 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 on the on the edge of like leveling up. Like you know that there's always like those light bulb moments to where you finally like understand a concept or you learn something new that bridges together like three or four other pieces you've been fumbling around with for like a while you know what i mean you've helped a lot of people learn how to play fighting games and stuff so i'm certain you've been witness to plenty of those moments yeah Um, yeah, definitely and i can um i can tell you that recently i've played with retro i've played against um rewind i played against pulse um so I've, i've played games against these top players and i can definitely see what kind of combat league stuff happens as opposed to that like tournament style gameplay and i think there's two outliers that i find and one is uh, aggression is that people are very very good with their characters like once they get something going like they have good setups they have good combos they have good uh, execution and, and getting these things done but the fundamentals of getting them started aren't quite there, and they open themselves okay, so, a lot. But it can snow, so it can s- snowball. Yeah. So once they get started, it's like they can... yeah, they get they get your whole health bar. Your health bar's gone. But if they can't get anything started, they're a little bit, a little bit maybe unsafe, um, a little bit reckless with because they're they just want to get in and get their thing going as fast as they can, not really playing an actual fighting game fundamentally playing too risky like overextending and being sure. too aggressive and just trying to keep their turn at any cost that sound does that sound like anybody you know <laughs> maybe maybe uh maybe someone i played recently oh man <laughs> <laughs> but i mean it's very very common and it's it's one of the main things that i notice and me as more of a defensive player i am easier to set my mind set to just I'm going to block and just wait for them to do something and then I'm going to punish it and then I can get my stuff going or I'm going to try and space them and you know once I space them properly bait them into something uh, because it's like hang- dangling a carrot you're like hey you could get this set up right now if you wanted to and it's just like well psych I blocked now you're dead so right so that that's actually a, kind of a light bulb moment I had myself today because I'm one of those players was like no I want my setup like I'm keeping my turn I eat armor and wake up buttons and i whiff over delay wake ups because i can't time my meetings or you know that's something that i've been working on and ermac actually taught me a lot of that so i've been trying to apply it to the way i'd already been playing uh melina and stuff but it's like to do that and set everything up and even like spend the resources and then you know, so you're almost like you're baiting their armor right you're baiting them into doing something and you just sit there so i'd like this whole elaborate thing into like Johnny to this when I was playing this Johnny like earlier and then just crouched because I knew that it was going to wake up and then just got the the punish off of that and it's like you can see the future right and that's like big yep. endorphin release that's good reward uh taking like making those sorts of reads I don't feel like that's super risky especially when you have somebody like sector backing you up with like a missile and stuff right it's just you know not letting him <clears throat> get away with the fastest armored <laughs> move in the, in the game, right? Because you just got too anxious and just tried to meaty with your, a regular button or something. You you let that ball roll go, hater. Sector's got your back. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't, uh, I don't do that anymore. I feel like Sector does not feel very good with Molina when you play it that way. Like when you just try to use it to lock down neutral, like try to get in a teleport and, you know, that sort of thing. Like you use it for mix-ups. So you do... You do the work, you do whatever you need to do to open them up. And once they're knocked down the first time, it's like it's like party time as long as you've got cameo. Right. Um, Which you might not have so, if you used him to get in or something like that, for example. Exactly. So you do so exactly. And the cooldowns come together a lot more. I was thinking about that, if they because a lot of people want sector buffed, and I think that he does need something to make him more synergistic with a lot of the cast but he does call like smoke and scorpion and melina he's a really 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 good cameo for melina uh in my opinion and if they ooh, if they adjust him in the wrong way like you are not gonna like that matchup he's one of those cameos Uh, or characters in some instances that's just one change away from being too good you know if they change he already makes characters like he already makes characters like melina stronger uh so if he just gets more on top of that like you know, Molinas will be very happy. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't doubt that. We'll see what the future holds for for those cameos. Um, 
Yeah, was no, there well, anything else on the Combat League front that uh, you ran into? I'm excited I, to talk to you about this because you have never really played well, it before. Because I'm slumming it down at the bottom, right? Because I just like I've been avoiding it. So I'm, I played uh, a bunch this morning. And one thing I saw, like, so I ran into like probably like three reptiles, and they all kind of like did the same thing. And I was thinking, okay, so this low level reptile meta is to basically try to get about mid screen and catch you with either the dash or the the death roll sort of move right right and both of them are death on block and both of them have like so little reward and it's just i feel like that's what people grab cuz it's special moves and you know things like that it's not even that much damage that is like just such the an example of high risk, low reward, um, yep. like a like a Molina teleport, right? Like a Molina ball roll is high risk, high reward because she gets a full combo for it. Um, right. But something that's just going to give you like a hundred damage and a knockdown or something. But I was like thinking to myself because I'm not trying to criticize anybody, and like I said, not trying to condescend anybody. I know my place, and I'm not even like a super strong player or anything. But I was like, they have the right idea. They're trying to find the optimal spacing for these special moves. They're just the wrong moves. The moves that you, if they thought about reptiles back three, the way they're thinking about is back forward four and trying to optimize that spacing and using safer things like strings instead of special moves that are going to make you eat like uh, your opponent's like hardest hitting combo, biggest damaging combo. Right. Um, so I feel like the, uh, the idea is there, um, just not the, the right option. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. Especially you're 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 maybe recognizing some of your character's tools, but not really to the extent that you kind of need to to maximize the gameplay there. So right, but you're not like a you're not a scrub. Like you're optimizing for the space, right? You just think that this is how like you want to play, but you're already using other fundamentals, uh, right? Like I see like something because I feel like they are definitely trying to like stay in that sort of spacing where they feel like it's really strong, where they can get it out without it getting stuffed and you know, not past max range, you know, things like that. Just not, you know, the best options, but you definitely have some, the frame of mind is there. The idea is there. Just use normals instead. Yeah. Things that's, that are like way, way safer. Optimize for a closer spacing. And that's definitely where like your fundamentals will start building because you figured out the first part, like you mentioned, spacing, you know, you have, you have these tools, you're understanding how to use these tools. And then once you start, getting in that mindset of learning and this is how I should be approaching these things, you start to put in more tools and more tools and more tools. And you're like, okay, well, instead of just trying to get this slide or this, the death roll or whatever, maybe I'll throw out a force ball in that same range every once in a while. Cause it's in the same, same range. And if it hits, I get a combo. Cool. And that's even more right, damage. Right. So, you know, things like that it's, yeah. it kind of evolves and snowballs. So like, yeah, once you're doing things like you need to recognize those types of things to improve and get better. And even if, you know, you're getting punished every once in a while on a on a blocked slide, but most of the time you hit it at the max spacing because you you made a read that way. You need to celebrate those things, and those are things that you can use to further your knowledge and look at other moves in that same sort of light. And it's uh, it's cool that it's one of the reasons I like doing the lessons so much is seeing these people evolve month over month and seeing them overcoming their struggles that you you could see that potential in that one set and then the next set it's like yes there it is that's awesome i love to see that you know it's it's a good feeling to watch watch people where every evolve. time you play them their combos are doing more damage and things like that yeah right? it's it's awesome i things love look that. tighter and crispier things are getting more optimized and a lot of its comfort level too um repetition so. and all that kind of stuff so yeah but and there's a lot that goes into that like then that's a big reward for like really learning, like choosing a character and learning a character to learn the game with. Some people are naturally good at playing uh, multiple characters or even like the whole roster. I'm not one of those. I can't and do that either. With that, I feel like it just makes it makes me a worse player. The more characters I try to learn, so I can really only focus on one at a time. If you're playing the game for like 100% funsies, I don't, you know, I don't care. You you play whoever. It doesn't bother me. But if you're really trying to get better, I really do strongly recommend picking one character and just understanding matchups and understanding how differently you have to play in different areas. And then, then you can kind of pick out the characters that you struggle against. And that's where you usually kind of will say, well, if you're really, really struggling against this 
character. Maybe try playing that character against your main character and just see how people are beating you, you know, and then you can see what other people are exploiting and that kind of a thing. So, but yeah, how you're getting punished, things that were so hard to deal for you to deal with. And now that you're playing that character, people are punishing you left and your right. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, I didn't know there was a gap there? all day and people are, you know, yeah, blowing me up. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, exactly. So lots to, lots to, uh, lots to learn. And, and combat league is definitely a place to learn it. Like I said, there's a certain level of toxicity. I find that kind of starts to dwindle down the higher up you go to some extent. Like it's definitely more prevalent in the lower tiers and then in the higher tiers, it still exists, just not to the level that it did on the lower tiers, if that makes sense. But it can be, it can be a hurdle, especially when like you get matched with somebody and you're like, oh my god, I know this guy's just gonna rocket teabag me if I lose because he's done it before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then that right. adds like a level of mentalness to it that you're like, damn. I know. I'm so thin-skinned. Like, as soon as I see the finisher or whatever, I just hold the home button, right? I'm just, I'm chill with the dashboard for like 20 seconds. Then I'm going back in. I'm, so oh, man. Most of the time I don't care, but sometimes I'm just like not in the mood for it, you know? No, I'm... I definitely I I don't dashboard, but I'll definitely will just walk away from my setup while that all that stuff's Who happening. I Go use, do something I else. I think I saw Saltface doing that on stream uh, when MK11 first came out. I'm pretty sure it was Saltface, and I was like, "Oh shit, I'm just gonna start doing that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that funny that you know somebody named Saltface is getting salty about the, that kind of stuff. You know, right? You know Saltface, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Back uh, in, yeah, okay. MK9 days, I believe. Is how far back we go. Yeah, even he had a super sick Molina and MKX. Yes, he did. Yes, he um, he sent me to losers at Combo Breaker with Sonya, I believe. Maybe no, I don't think it was Molina. I think it was Sonya. It was like the that was like the second or third major of that game. But that was the last time I think I've played him in an offline event. But anyways, we can reminisce about other players another time. We could probably do a whole podcast about <laughs> players another probably. time. Probably. That's a challenge for another day. All right. Uh, what's well, next? Uh, you you want to play a game? I had an idea for a game. Tell me, I'm interested. Uh, okay, so the working title is "Ain't It Dead Yet," and it doesn't have anything to do with Say Jam's "Will It Kill." Nope, I nope. didn't get the idea from it at all. Doesn't sound Actually, like it. Actually, so his his is more of like it's looks like it's the last interaction of a round or something, right? Is it gonna kill or isn't? And I I had this idea to do something kind of just more like. I'm going to tell you that an opponent has a thousand health and then you're just going to watch a sequence, right? Against an opponent that's just always blocking wrong or not blocking. Let's just say everything goes your way, right? So let's say two to four interactions or something, but with no UI, no health bars, no indication about how much damage is actually being done. Okay. And then you have to guess if what you just saw killed them or not. And then we'll watch it again with the UI so we can uh roast you or you know congratulate you <laughs> all right and, and uh, uh yeah everyone 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 watching i want you to guess whether i'm gonna get it right or wrong all right that's that's your job guess whether i'm gonna get it right or wrong i love and this. I, I will say so so there's two there's two things we're gonna go over here right so we're gonna go through it twice and i'm also gonna preemptively grant you one lifeline that you can only use one time. So you might oh. want to save it for the next one, if not for this other one. But that lifeline is only, you can, I will reveal to you uh, the damage number, either the, the highest damaging combo in the sequence or the lowest damaging combo in the sequence. But I won't tell you which combo it is. And it won't be any other ones, one extreme or the other. All right. I think I'm picking up what you're throwing down. So, uh, all right. We get into this here or. Yeah, let, let's go. Okay, so we got it up here, and it says Molina Sector. So I'm assuming that's going to so be the first, first one. Team. All right, so am I okay to, to start watching the sequence? Yeah, so as soon as it's over, it'll tell you when to pause, right? Just make sure you pause when it... When all right, it all right. We don't, wanna, we don't want to spoil anything here. We're trying to play the game. All right, so. no, no spoilers. All right, here we go. Molina Sector. Three... Oh, there's even a countdown? Let's go. All right. Oh, flawless blocking. Okay. I can hear the sound of the flawless block. Don't know if that has any effect on the damage or not, though. Shove combos. You're a dirty hater. That was disgusting. All 
All that right. That was gross. Okay, pause it. Pause uh, it. We're paused. We're paused. Pause. All right. As, or at you least need it to sounds see it again? like pause. What do you, what uh -huh. do you think? Huh? Do you understand what happened there? Like, so... Am I allowed to watch it again? Am I allowed to watch it a second time? You are too allowed to watch it. So I'll tell you what. So the it starts with... So he is flawless blocking uh, the gap in Melina's 1-2 string. Okay. But she special canceled it into the flamethrower. And if you flawless block, she's negative 15. And if you try to punish with a 7-frame move... You're gonna trade with the flamethrower, and it's gonna break her animation, and she's gonna get a combo. So, does that scale the combo adversely, or not scale the combo at all, or whatever? But that's how the whole thing starts, and then it just goes into mix-up. So the okay. first mix-up's throw, and the second mix-up is a low. Both of them with the missiles. Uh, to, to assuming to we're in the combo. Let me watch this again, just to. And this is like regular cameo, right? This isn't like on refill or whatever, right? So you get three sectors in this sequence, if I'm... Yeah. So I'm assuming sector rebuilds to full after the first one? The flamethrower recharges really fast, and Molina's combos are very long, so... Right. He's already full by the time that missile comes out. I am going... First one. I am going with my limited knowledge on sector. I am going to say that the cameo scales enough so that it doesn't doesn't kill i think you said okay you said i had a lifeline or something i could use if i wanted to right if you wanted to if you're so all the lifeline is going to give you so if you want to use it right now then i would ask you do you want to know the damage value of the biggest damage combo in that sequence or the smallest damage value or like the smallest damage in combo. Oh, okay. I'm um, not going to tell you which the combo is, but just what no, the damage that's fair. value is. That's fair. I know that Melina can hit pretty hard, and there are sector combos are a thing. Um, I think I'm confident enough that I want to save the lifeline for now, and I'm going to go with it doesn't quite kill. Okay, well, let's unpause it okay. and... We're going to watch it again with the UI, and we'll see. All right. Three, two, one. Okay, there's the... I think I fucked up. That did 452. It's like a stick of butter <laughs> melting in the microwave. Ah, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, God. This is going to be so close. Oh, it did! <laughs> oh, just they barely. The forward four. No, before even the forward four. Oh, forward man. Four all overkill. All right. So you failed. I uh, failed. Roasted. All right. Roasted. We got one. We got one more. Okay. So if I just press play, so Ermac Frost, so I'll pause this here. Anything I need to know before going into this one that you need to explain to me? No, you've seen some of this before. If you want to watch it a second time or if you have any questions about like what's happening. Uh, but it's just like more, it's Vortex. Stuff. Okay, okay. All right, so this is the Vortex that you probably had posted on TYM. So let's let's get into this here. Maybe so part, part of it, but with some extra ice carpet. I'm already thinking that that scaled with the ice carpet. Okay. Oh, oh, he can fully charge that? Oh. Yeah. And the fatal blow. Right, his is a projectile. Okay, we're in the fatal blow, yeah. Okay. Then. Oh, you're not done right, yet. Yo. Oh, okay. An Hit him with a meaty. Ice carpet. Yeah. <laughs> a little meaty post fatal blow. What are they going to do, sort of thing. Right, right. right. So just the yellow ice carpet to, to close it out. So, what do you think? Do you need to see it again, or. I think I'm going to use this lifeline for. Because I do think that that frost ice carpet probably scales pretty badly. So, can you tell me what, like, the smallest. The smallest combo in that sequence did? The smallest combo in that sequence is 127 spot 1-2 damage. 12%, almost 
Damn, for that sequence? Uh, that was just one, one of the combos. Whichever one of those combos of many. did the least amount of damage at 127 damage. Okay. Um, so the opponent well, has 1,000 health. Did they die? Or are they still alive? I feel like I'm overestimating how much the cameos actually scale. So I'm going to say that this one killed. I'm pretty I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going with that one. This one killed. All right. Let's check it out. All right. Let's watch this. Let's watch this back. Scout, scout for that 127. You're looking for that number, right? Which combo is it? Okay. There's the ice carpet. There's four frosts in the sequence, by the way. That's crazy. Uh, ice carpet recharges really fast. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, look at the orb, though. Ooh. Yeah, that one's rough. That's like a sector missile. Okay, there's the throw. Freeze, fatal blow. Okay. Is this, is this, is this going to be the one? <laughs> is this not the most pathetic fatal blow combo you've ever seen? That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. Damage. <laughs> we go for the yellow ice carpet. Okay. Oh, my but God. But it still doesn't even kill after oh, all of that. Oh, my after God. After all of that. After all of that. Still have, it's, it's still like not even close to killing. It's not even... Anyway. So that means I was wrong twice. You were wrong twice in a juxtaposition between two teams in the same game, right? That was very smart. That was very, very... Like, I, I figured with the fatal blow, which now I know is not the case, <laughs> that that you was... got bamboozled. I got yeah. bamboozled. So this was fun. All right. Um, I feel okay. like we should bring this segment back, but I think we'll need some input from the outside on some Probably. setups to use. Yeah, I only know a couple. I don't know very many characters deep enough to, like, lab stuff like that out. That's just kind of stuff that I was already... Then I've, I've got a few other things, but if people have ideas, leave them in the comments. And as long as I can understand what you're saying, I'll try it. And Yeah, just ideas. If I use it, or I'll use, it like, a variation of it, right? Because if you're talking about it in the comments, then we all know that whether or not it kills, I'll have to tweak it somehow. Yeah, even though there's some um, sort of a... Sort of some sort of a sequence, like you can do this into this, or this leads to this. This is to a 50-50 right. on wake up kind of a thing, you know? Most of them are trying, so I was like, fuck, what can I do with Scorpion? Man, so I was messing around with Scorpion Jax. I was like, is this the one I want to be doing? So I need, like, that's most of the ideas, I feel like. Good teams to do that, to just decimate your health bar with a couple of mix-ups. I think that shit's so fun. It's fun to do. It's not fun to yeah. play against. <laughs> no, yeah. Playing against it's that fun. sucks. <laughs> It's fun to play that way, but not for it to be played against you. That's how I feel every time I put an MKX. It's like it's fun when yeah. I'm doing combos in the lab, but like just getting mixed into mix into mix is I'm I'm past that stage at this right. point. But uh yeah, thanks for that hater. That was that was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing that again. And maybe I can come up with some ideas on my side and we'll uh flip the tables and have, have you uh Ain't it ain't it dead yet? Is that what it's that, that's a reference yeah, that's to something. Skinny puppy reference. Shout out to Skinny Puppy. They're fellow Canadians. You should know who they are, Dink. I definitely listen to them on my daily commutes to work, so hundred percent. Right. So let's go. Let's go. Not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> nope. Uh but if you want to, you know. Moving you on know, to Skinny Puppy sponsorship. The dude, be, I, would I be the first gamer to ever be sponsored by Skinny Puppy? Yeah, but maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I gotta okay. let me let me secure that Metamucil sponsorship first, and I'll then I'll move on. That's right. You're all, you're always singing their praises. It's the best. One of these part days, of your daily routine. One of these yeah. days, I'll come up with a uh, with a little uh, little shooting my shot. You know, a little ad for them. Like, hey, this is what you could have. You know, what right. do you say? You know. Well, so you want to talk about some combat pack two speculation? So, yeah, we're coming kind of to the end. We're definitely over the halfway mark of the first combat pack. So I kind of wanted to go over who I was thinking of for the second one because there's a lot of uncertainty in my mind about what direction they're going to take it in. And I think it might it might depend on story expansion kind of thing. Have you thought about... Because with the combat pack one, the guest theme seemed to be like dark superhero characters kind of a thing felt like maybe 
some sort of an odd nod to not having a justice out and doing MK instead kind of a thing. Um, so I don't well, know. Well, they all just happen to have TV shows that they were promoting uh, at, the, at the same time. So it fits thematically like these kind of like ultra violent comic book, either anti heroes or villains or, you know, yeah, what, whatever. So I, was... I had a really hard time speculating on anything else that would fit that. <laughs> Did you come up with anything? So kind of what I was thinking was like, and they've done this before. So like, I think it's just my, my caveman brain just being like, Oh, I saw that before. So I do it, do it again. My thought was right. guest character or um, horror characters because there's still a few that people have been asking for that they haven't done yet. Right. That I thought they could and throw in. So that's in MKX, it was all horror characters. All the guests were horror characters, right? And then in MK11, all of the guest characters were like action hero yeah. sorts of things ac across the combat packs. Yep. Except for Joker, right? But we know that that was supposed to be Ash Williams, which technically would kind of like fall under that. Right. Um, same sort of thing. So are they going to continue this trend of this kind of like dark, ultra violent superhero thing? And that's going to be the rest of our guest characters or like a half and half. They're doing this and then, yeah, maybe doing another focusing on another horror pack because I know Ghostface uh, is one I always see coming up and... I feel like it's coming eventually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've been making... Unless it's a licensing thing. I mean, they've been making... There was a new, newer Scream movie that came out recently, wasn't there? A little... Not too long ago? Am I misremembering that? I don't that? know. I'm not... I'm not up of the... I'm not up on the Scream... The Scream... Uh... Yeah. Scream lore. Me neither. Like, when, when people say Ghostface, like, and I think of... Uh, I've watched those movies, but it was, like, years ago. I just think of, like, what what would he do? Like, he's just a dude with a knife isn't he like he doesn't have any superpowers or anything he's just kind of this creepy teenager if i remember correctly who's like well it's you it changes from movie to movie like that's spoiler true. alert it is about the idea of him it's not going to be the person in the costume it's oh, going I to see. be the costume itself and the guy, you know, talking like he's all creepy on the phone, you know. What's uh, up? <laughs> what's up? Yeah, exactly. That's actually like scary more scary movie. They should That's what I dude, that would be so funny. That's what I think of whenever I think of him as a scary movie iteration. <laughs> what's up? Oh my gosh. That would be so funny. Those first couple scary movie uh The first they three were, like really funny. The first three are super Man, the one I think it was four. What was the one that had Charlie Sheen in it and that like was a... part of the parodies was science and stuff and her the detective hat like kept growing every time <laughs> yeah. it cut to her or whatever. She broke uh, her wiener. <laughs> she broke her wiener. Oh, oh that I was died. that's probably my favorite scary. I mean, I think that's three three or four. Those first four were were awesome. After that, they kind of got a little bit bleh. They're all right, but I don't really remember That's the them. best moment in any of them. She broke her wiener. She broke her wiener? Can <laughs> I <laughs> some time with oh, her? Maybe man. just the bottom half? <laughs> right. Uh, anyways, this isn't anyway. uh, movie quotes podcast. Well, so, if, so, for my guest characters, I just assumed that they had horror characters was going to be the theme, because I couldn't think of another theme they could do. Um, so there's two that I picked, and the third one I'm kind of on the fence about... The first one is uh, Pinhead, because I see a lot of people asking for him. I think he's super cool and could be done in a lot of fun ways. And the second one is Michael Myers, who, again, now that I think about it, is also a guy with a knife. But still, it's the idea, right? To kind of bounce off. Those are just two that I've seen that were, like, kind of floating around. That I've seen, like, multiple times be asked for. And I feel like maybe MKX was supposed to have some more DLC or something, but... Um, they've also talked about making, or there's been rumors about making like horror themed games and that kind of a thing. But those are two that I think I've seen asked for quite a bit and I think could be done in pretty cool ways. And then the third one I was kind of on the fence of, and I think this third one, if they did have it, I would probably put as a cameo because I could feel could be, um, done easier in that way. And that was Chucky. Um, or, and I can't, I should have Googled his name before a jigsaw jigsaw is the other one. I feel he could be like, we would ever have a guest cameo. We haven't had one of those yet. I think, think it would be a have guest cameo. I think that would be really cool. Cause like though, I think both of those would make really cool cameos. Like the dude just rolls in on his little 
tricycle or whatever and just like drops a bomb or something just keeps rolling off you know or maybe he kind of comes out with a fucking bear trap yeah throws it on the ground and then you know chucky being so small it's gonna maybe throw him around kind of like a farah kind of i think mine mine, who knows that's another one we have to talk about too is farah um but who knows um so i think it would be interesting if you had those two guest characters and then maybe a guest cameo would be kind of neat and something that they haven't done yet which would be kind of cool i think um but you know passing that over to you hater what did you come up with or or if you did come up with anything for for guest characters or themes or anything like that i'm so bad at this sort of stuff (laughs) Uh, the guest stuff especially i think that harley quinn is an obvious choice on the back of the joker being an mk11 and she's already part of so many like rated r or tvma related things that it is she not fits. a stretch just like it wasn't for joker to be like in this more violent sort of setting and and things like that it's not like you know batman or something you know even when though we've seen like more adult versions of batman we also have like kitty versions and stuff that transcend that right uh so I I don't even know. I agree with your horror ones. If they're going to do like a horror pack or something, uh, I think a lot of it is licensing. And most of these ideas and what people want, I think the NRS has also had these ideas. They just can't like, like what people that want Buffy or, you know, right. Neo I or, forgot about or Buffy. whatever it is. Yeah. Neo. I think they ultimately just. I would want to see John Wick before I see Neo. <laughs> I think he fits I, more. I saw a rumor, right? Like somebody saying that they heard somewhere or they remember seeing, you know, like one of those situations, right? But it's like Keanu Reeves doesn't like the idea of it. He doesn't want like his likeness to be like fatalities and stuff. But yeah, and I was talking about that the other day. all sorts of fucked up movies and stuff. He doesn't want to see that happening to himself. That's that's what I heard. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just something I saw in passing when people were talking about this on uh, over on Test Your Might. Yeah, and I, I was talking at work about this the other day. Is like... When, you ha- when you're, like, a guest character in Mortal Kombat, it's a little bit different than, like, other games because you have to be okay with seeing your likeless be dismembered and stuff, like... And I think it takes a certain kind of person. Like, I could see John Cena just being like, what? Hell yeah, rip me apart. <laughs> like, throw me in there, you know? That's cool. So, like, yeah, that's definitely something that you have to kind of... And I wonder how that, that affects, like, you know, like, um, people who do, like, the face models and stuff for these characters. Like, if they really, like, understand that, like you're going to be the face of this character, but you're also going to have your face like cut off the character too. Right. Like it's right. Your face is going to be on the, you know, on the floor separated from the rest of your head at sometimes, you know? Yeah. Looking at you, like, I don't know how I'd feel about that happening to myself. Not that that'll ever happen to me, but you know, I wouldn't just... be playing. I mean, a job's a job, right? I just want to play it. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to look at it or watch it or whatever. I just wonder how, uh, how that would have, would affect them. But, um, what, so what about like, like core, like so this combat pack had what three three characters three mk characters three guest characters right so six total and then five cameos right and then five five cameos so we don't need to stick to that like i think just talking like in in general i it's fine and we've kind of covered the guest thing and even crossed over into the cameos with the your radical idea of having a guest cameo i actually think that would be that would be really cool and it is probably something that we'll we'll see um for a core roster who do you think's left of the 3d era besides who hotaru um that's funny that that's has a realistic chance of coming back that's the number one on my list is hotaru i think like, okay so with the whole I chaos chose more than three there's a bunch I wanted to talk about that I think have potential, but because I had a feeling we'd choose the same ones. <laughs> so it's like who's left at this point, right? Right. So, what are your thoughts on on Hotaru? I think that he needs to come back, like because of how prevalent that storyline was back in the Deception with the Chaos versus Order, and I think he will. And I think honestly, I think with seeing like Titan Havoc at the end of the story mode, spoiler alert. It's been six months. Get your shit together. I think that seeing that, like, he'll might make an appearance as like the opposite to that, like come in to try and help stop him or whatever. And it'd be really interesting to see what they do with his redesign because he's got like those crazy flags on his back, um, and he has that really unique like weapon that he uses. His his special moves were a bit lackluster and kind of also kind of 
redone yeah, like, where, like lava and stuff right and kind of like the Liu king kick yeah so it's kind of like i don't know how they would redo him that way but they were able to do it with other 3d characters i mean look at ashra she doesn't look really at maybe a very very base level but a lot of her stuff is something that's never been seen from her before so i'm sure they nope. could come up with some stuff for him oh but sure I'm... to like reimagine him yeah 100 percent. you know so and I... darius is from order realm isn't he yeah, they already have a little bit of order realm in the game, and they have um, they've also gone away with Dairu, saying that Dairu turned into Havoc now. So oh. that uh, yeah, they've hinted at that in the story mode, and then there's also I think a couple hints at invasions as well that Havoc is also really? yeah. There's there's a intro that Havoc has with one character and i can't remember who it was but someone says like you don't have to do this dairu or something like that and he's like i am now havoc or something like that it's it, it's interesting interesting interaction. oh okay I do, I do think i remember hearing about that like really early in the game's life like those early interactions and people are like what the fuck yeah exactly um, so it kind of tells me that they're they're just kind of moving away from the dairu character which would make sense, you know. I think that's well written. I like that choice. You know, I, I mean, Dairu wasn't a really popular character as far as lore goes. He was one of the best characters in the game at the time because it was seven frame unblockable launcher. But <laughs> in a three D game, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. But anyways, uh, it'd be nice to see some kind of ode to that somehow. Uh, it's just such a famously broken move. But yeah, Hotaru is one that I, I would really... He fits with kind of the theme of what they're doing. I think he's good enough and he can be fleshed out enough to be like a main roster character. I hope they kind of give him his like big intimidating kind of stature. I think that's something that he needs. Uh, but yeah, that's really all that I had on, on Hotaru. I have a list of three, so I don't know if you want to go through my list first and we can compare notes or if you have one that you really wanted sure. to spitball off of or... no yeah and then i'll just because i broke down so i have like five for the regular characters and about like six ish for cameos because i'm expecting some crossovers so yeah. you let, let her rip there and so if you we'll see where it at those that uh that know my stance on this game will will not be surprised at the second one but i want jared i want jared as a character Hopefully he comes back in the story expansion. The new I, character. New character. Like he's in the game. He's never been a playable character. Yeah. So new character. He is in the game. He is from, he comes back in the story expansion from, you know, the multiverse thing where he was never Ermac. He's Jared. He's that character. He's here to kick some ass. Fine. Keep your Jared out of my Ermac, whatever. Totally fine. You have Ermac now. Now we have a Jared and that's going to be, the character and that's and what what does he play like what do you what do you envision his design to be like how is he dressed he and needs like what is he his special moves like i kind of envision him as like a kind of a neptune kind of look with like kind of like the i don't know like the god of the ocean kind of thing but like not like because he's like a denian right and he was the king so he needs like a really royal he needs to kind be he needs to be regal right he needs to be regal for sure and uh as far as special moves and stuff that's that's super open because um i feel like that should also kind of follow like the adenian model of things like with sindel and melina and katana and rain and all that kind of thing I feel like he kind of needs to have something in there, but as far as specifics, I haven't really theory crafted quite what yet. You know, maybe there's some. If Sindel has the screams, maybe he has something. I don't know, similar along those lines. I have... it would be weird to see, you know, King Jared just screaming at people, but one might say the same for Sindel. It'd be, Sindel, it'd so be cool knows? to like find a way for him, to, like he uses like magic or something. Maybe he's a mage like Ranger like rain or something or yeah or whatever but he can like summon like little like portals or discs close to you like he's a trap character like he can but he's using magic to do it instead yeah. of like throwing out bombs or something like that would whatever. be would be super cool you know like some something that like is very clearly like he's the king he's a leader of this realm these are his this is why he's leader is because of all this you know and maybe like all right I don't know. I haven't, like I said, I haven't hashed He's out specifics. definitely not on my list, so look at you. You're thinking way outside the box. You're thinking about it way, way better I, than I approached it. I'm I so pedestrian. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I spent a lot of the times 
in the 3D eras. So like all those characters are like, now that we're revisiting, I'm super excited about all that. I'm just like, yeah, like there's this character and this character and this character, like all these characters. I'm like, well, we can see them all again. Oh my God, I'm 18 again. Yay, let's go. You right. Know? So. Um, yeah, the characters like Ashra and Natara that were been on my wish list. They're on my wish list for MK11 and for this game, and they are both in this game. So, what what am I to do without my my classic go tos? They're giving me the characters I asked for. So, how dare you? How dare you actually fulfill our list and don't give us stuff to talk about? Man, and I don't play either character, <laughs> <laughs> oh, which is hilarious. He, he still pick bad. Molina. They give you your characters, you don't play either I one. I tried. I tried. I'm still. I, I'll tell you the Molina story one day. So the deep rooted history with Molina. Oh, I know you and your anyway. your demonic ladies. Anyway, right. so my third one is the definitely the pumpkin spice latte on this list, but I feel like it, it just needs to happen. Is Cabal like he's just such a staple Aww. of the series at this point? I would he's be on excited my cameo for him. list. He's on oh, my that's, cameo list. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so so he has so so he has this little so. He's going to be a mix-up cameo. Then he's got the low hook, right, to pull out your feet from underneath you. And the low does the little spin over the shoulder multiple times, right, just to, like, swing you around. So he kind of gives you an overhead low, sort of like striker. I don't right. know how they'd make that different. And then he's got the the rush across the, the screen to spin you around and stun you. And also has, like, the gas ball, right, would be, like, his back cameo. He does, like, the MK9 kind of backwards gas ball, like, an annoying shit. I think he'd be a sick cameo. So... Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to elaborate on it because Cabal was famously broken in MK9. Best character, bar none in that game. If I were to make Cabal a cameo, he would have shoutouts to being that broken. He would have a flash parry where you summon him oh, right in no. front of you and he's just like a hit of invincibility and then he goes away. So kind of how you can use like Shujinko as a meat shield. Except yeah, you wouldn't yeah, have cooled like on. lean into that idea. You can do that with yeah, any cameo that stands out in front of you, you can kind of use to absorb a hit like that. Yeah. I never so, thought about it as a flash parry, but yeah. Yeah, so he would kind of use that with no penalty to the cameo. So he wouldn't go on cooldown or anything like that's what that means. And move do is damage made to, do. to you. It was like an, an intended mechanic. Yeah, exactly. So you take you take the damage, but I it gives you a hit of like armor. That, that could be fun. Um he comes on screen and does three super duper low instant air gas blasts as like a shout out to how broken that zoning was in MK9. Similar to how like Janet does like the three punches as the, you know, the Johnny Cage reference from, oh, from MK1. Okay. Yep, yep. So it's the yep. same reference of those really, really annoying instant air gas blasts, but he only does three of them, just pew, 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 you know? And then I think I would just give him the spin as well. You know, I think that's yep. classic, classic cabal stuff. And then, you're just stuck. It's just super unsafe. You know, you throw it out, and if it's blocked, you and your cameo are both stuck for, like, um, a few frames or something, whatever, 20 frames. 20 frames! I mean, you, you can use him like you would, like, a combo. It's like a, a combo starter. Like, you would use Lao's spin for or something, right? Yeah, or same sectors idea. Sectors teleport. Same, same sort of idea. But now that you say that, I like him more as a cameo than I do as a main roster. So I thought about it a little bit. I didn't really like him in MK11, but I like the idea of Cabal a lot, and I would like to see him come back. And on the topic of, so another character that I thought about kind of in that way, and I was had them like, uh, would I put them on the main? If it was up to me, um, I because. I don't think when we talk about characters being cameos, especially like early on, it's like, oh, they've been relegated to being a cameo. But we're seeing that cameos can be the stars. And there's like way more opportunities to see cameos if they're good. So I, for that reason, I am putting Noob Cybot on my cameo wish list. Oh, and I completely forgot about Noob. Good so one. you can just see him paired with everybody, right? Not just Noob players, but see him all over. And he's going to do like MK9 portal shit, kind of like what Reigns sort of doing. So it right. can complement Reigns, not be redundant. But that same tools anybody could be using in Noob portal form. And he's got the clones for some certain sorts of things and probably the sickest forward throw animation in the whole game. You know, stuff like that. So Noob is on my cameo wish list. Damn, that's a good one. I didn't even think of that. There's so many cool things you could do with Noob. Oh, man. I know. I would just love to see him paired with, like, other characters and really complimenting him. And, like, for him to be part of the discussion. Like, for, like, one half the class to be like, this guy is a problem. And the other half to be like, no way, he's sick, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that sort of thing. I love that. Um, 
to round out, I actually have more ideas for cameos, but to round out, I think we need another uh, another four armed cameo. So Kentaro or Shiba. Yeah, I have and both who, of those on my list too. Whoever, whichever one it is, is going to have Shiva's fireball stance from MK11 to where it'd be kind of like a Janet Wall or the puppet sort of thing. You know, that sort of like idea where they can be out, but you can be moving around too. And they're like behind you with a fireball in each arm ready to do something with it, right? Bro. Like how Shiva was in MK11 with that one ability. I think that would be super sick. My mind's already going crazy with the amount of zoning I could do with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I so would anyway, love to Kentaro, see Kentaro we haven't seen since like MK9, right? So True. I, I, think I would, would rather see Shiva, but I think his time is due and it could give us a alternative to goro maybe some similarities too maybe he also has a stomp but with different properties or something yeah that would make sense i'm i've i'm yeah no, but damn you're so good another one that i forgot about well done um so one that i thought of actually was madame Bo, and i thought she could be done really interesting as kind of shout outs to bo Raicho from mkx one thing in particular I thought of was, you know how Bo Raicho had, like, the fart cloud. They would make her fart. Yeah, they would make her fart, and that would be weird. <laughs> See, well, hold on, hold on. I, I've got I've got this figured out. So, like, which okay. was hilarious in MKX because, like, you know, you'd be watching stream or something. Oh, I hit him with a meaty fart. And, like, to yeah. see the only time that that's an actual sentence. But um, right. instead of the fart, it's a smoke cloud. Because you know how she lights out that cigarette at the... Uh, after the the initial ambush so maybe oh, she's she, not blowing it out her butt like, yeah to, it's the know. same okay. same idea but it's a smoke cloud like she's got a cigarette and then she just blows a little smoke cloud onto the and it stuns you same same idea so something like that is kind of what i had in mind and then something similar to kind of how we like have some shout outs to blanche as well oh yeah that's a you perfect know? idea uh, see, you, you said you suck at this but you're doing this better than i am <laughs> no no uh i thought it like would be nrs I have ideas. Please save me <laughs> from my corporate overlords. My soul crushing. A soul daily crushing routine. nine to five. Save me. I thought she could have something along the lines of Shujinko, where like Shujinko steals like Katana's booty bounce when you do Katana's throw. I thought that she could do something kind of like goofy and animated like that, you know, like a big old belly flop out onto the screen or something like that. I thought I think she comes out like a badass with a little fan, like waving it in her face, or whatever. While in her other hand, she's smacking you around with a cane or something. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, some cane moves. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's just. I, I feel like they they made that character for a reason. I don't think she's like maybe fleshed out enough to be like a main roster character, but I think she would make a pretty sick cameo. If that sounds like a thing to you. Yeah, or just regular old Bo Raicho. I actually have him on my list as like a potential, like another cameo sort of to talk about. Like, you think him over Madame Bo? I feel like, I don't know, like either way. What Bo Raicho is, is kind of like the drunken archetype. I mean, that's not what Madame Bo is. It's just kind of like a reference in name. Right. So I was thinking more of just kind of like the archetype, something else that they could kind of, you know bring but that's more of like a character thing maybe not a cameo thing unless you got to charge bo raicho drinks to use him or make things more powerful or something or as he does things he gets more drunk and so it comes out slower but it does more damage or whatever it is they're gonna do to whatever their wacky tobacco ideas are that would be interesting cameos unique if they had um, like like bo raicho has like a like a joker trade effect from injustice 2 like the more drunk that he gets the more faster you move or something like that that'd be interesting the faster you move, your character, your character moves? moves. Yeah. Oh man, that would be crazy. Yeah, and that like... would fuck up my combos. I don't want to move faster. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like in, you know in neutral, but like, right. I don't know. There's so much like micro walking and micro dashing. I feel like that would fuck me up. Yeah, um, you're not wrong, but I mean, you could do some crazy stuff with it. I'm sure. I also think I'm gonna get probably roasted for this one, uh, but. Devora as a cameo with setups and insect bombs and her dropping down to grab you like she did in MK11 is like a like an assist sort of thing. Yep, I think she I have that be, too. I have that on my list. She too. could be really cool instead of a main roster character, but let her bring that utility to like everybody. Classic Devora, you know, low ground bugs and bug bomb setups and like I said, like tele the teleport grab thing. You know, maybe even an air throw. 
right? Like the first cameo air throw. Oh, that would be know? cool. That would be really neat, actually. Stuff like that. I think that she would be a cool cameo pick. So your ideas have just far and away blown away my last two cameo picks that I have. So they're not going to sound as exciting anymore. But this, what I came up with was also Harley Quinn as a cameo. Um, you said main roster character, which makes more sense. But I mean, oh, that would be cool though, like because it would be like multiverse. They could, could do like the multiverses, but it would yeah. be you know really violent, like MK, but kind of campy and charming like multiverses oh man can you imagine if they they, they put in multiverses characters in mortal Kombat, like oh like bugs God. bunny and shit? they wouldn't do that <laughs> a fucking be... steven universe or whatever yeah, yeah. Mortal Kombat. could you imagine that would be some cross promotion right there my fucking rug rats rug rat cameo <laughs> oh my god so that anyway one, so yeah harley quinn was one and then the other one i had okay. was um the courtyard guard from mortal Kombat one uh shang sung's courtyard stage with the you know the one with the like the kind of triangular mask um kind of stands in front of the stage yeah yeah uh, i just couldn't really think of any original moves for them to do like you could do some shell and monks kind of references i just think that character in itself would be a nice shout out because it seems to have kind of been consistent bad guy throughout games so like having it as a cameo would kind of be an interesting shout out but now, after all your good right. ideas, I feel like that's that was like my big breakout idea, and now I I feel that's not very good. <laughs> no, I think that's a splendid. Like you're thinking like way outside the box. I feel like I'm just saying obvious stuff. I think that your ideas are better than mine. No, you know it's like like I'm 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 jumping out of the box, and you're just grabbing my leg before I get all the way out. You know <laughs> that no, kind of no, a thing. No, no. So, but I, I that's all the ideas I had for combat pack two i don't know if there's anything else you wanted to uh toss around talk there. about main roster what was all your characters on them for the main roster you said hotaru hotaru and jared else? and cabal oh that's right and okay so shifted my thoughts on cabal to, to yes. cameo oh okay okay so i had a couple others so ed boone said really early on i'm pretty sure this wasn't a fever dream you know sometimes rumors start and then people just start talking about things like it was Sanction, fashion and there yeah. really was never an interview to back it up it just kind of like turned into something yeah but i'm pretty sure early on he said that if cameos were popular enough that they had the potential to be like a main roster character for dlc so with that in mind oh, whether that's true or not with only that in mind serena is absolutely on my list 100 uh, i she already looks sick right i could just imagine her with the full toolkit and then people can stop complaining about Kia's blades and stuff. She'll have way more annoying stuff than that. Right. And there's no redundancy because we already have Scorpion on both and Sub-Zero on both and Kung Lao on both. Um, and it sounded like they're already kind of, they're already open to it. Uh, my other, obviously Scarlet is on my list. Oh, I would right. Love I, to see her I forgot with about like, Scarlet. With like, I would love to see her trance thing be more like Quan's MKX one since they didn't give it to him in this game. That's something that they could give her with and maybe not treat her as kind of like a zoning spacer sort of thing and a, a mix in between what she was in MK11 and MK9 because in MK9 she was like top tier. One of the better oh. ones. What would you describe her play style as? She kind of just, just did. Down. She did kind of everything. She was like yeah, anti zoner rush down stuff too, right? Yeah, like she was rush down damage for sure. Uh, she had a little bit of mix, but yeah, I I, was, I wouldn't say she was a zoner. She could zone if she had the life lead, but that's not really what she wanted to do. But she was more of an anti zoner because she had that really fast, annoying projectile. All right. Um, I think other good candidates I would just throw out. I didn't really stay true to the, like the sticking only to three like sort of thing. Just stuff right. that I want to see. Right, Aaron Black and Kotal Khan. Like uh, I would like to see both of them back in this game at some point. I think they would yeah. be super sick. I think they're game. both good original characters. I don't really care if they're full like main roster or cameo. I don't really. I won't play either one. But if you're fans of them, let me know. I don't really care. But yeah, I agree. They're good characters that we should see back. I didn't play Kotal in MK11, but I played him a lot in MKX. And Blood God, right? Uh, I would play him Sun God. That right, the grab. command grab. It's too good. It yeah. is good. I think it got me so salty so many times. Yeah, you're too you're too respectful. Yeah, you're I too get... easy to grab. I know, okay, and that's okay. going to go back to what I was... Grab, <laughs> Dink's worst enemy. 
It's true. It's true. And then when I try and use it, I'm so irresponsible with it because I'm like, well, it's going to work every time. And then they jump out of it. I'm like, why does it work every time on me but not on somebody else? <laughs> right. But yeah, that's about wrapped, wraps up my uh, what I was thinking. Yeah, and I think that about wraps up the podcast. So oh, that's dang. that went by really quickly. That was uh, that was a, a a fun hour and a bit there, hater. Well, oh, yeah, that did go by super fast. It's it's easy when uh, we're bouncing ideas off each other, and when there's fun games to play too. Thank you for coming up with that, by the way. I appreciate that. Oh, did you like it? Yeah, if people like it, we can do it again. I'm just kind of like, right now we're still like spitballing a lot of stuff and like just trying out all these random ideas. If anybody likes anything, then yeah, feel free to mention it. And if you have ideas for that, let me know down in the comments. I'll down in the comments. I'll go through them and try to come up with some some stuff for next time. Maybe not next week, but but after and we'll play is it toxic at some point again oh in the yeah future. well now that you're uh now that you're back in combat league again i i expect next week to be full on like an hour long is it, to <laughs> is it toxic yeah like, once, here's all these once things the scale I've level seen. evens out right once i kind of get out of like the super low because i definitely below belong above there but things are probably are gonna start evening out for me i would guess like in warrior and like going through like the second tier, you know how they break him out like the first three and then the second three, then the third right. three, like for the rewards and get through the first three and like, you know, into that second one is where I'm going to start. Like, all right, I just need to focus on being patient. Like this is just like my lesson for the week sort of thing. And that sort of stuff drives me crazy, but. And uh, I'll make sure to check in next, uh, next week with you and see how, how things are going or what's evolved in your your little combat league journey as i continue on with mine i think i just got to demigod so i'm trying to hit elder oh, god with uh shujinko nice. and kwan this season so but nice have you made the elder god grind before like in this game i made it once uh i think the season that quan chi came out the Sh shang Tsung was definitely struggle bus uh sindel i was really really close uh in the second season and but you ran out of time, right? I ran out of time, and then Quan that was the Chi one that was all up. fucked up with all the desyncs and stuff, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. And then Quan came out, and then he just was bad <laughs> for two seasons, so I just I didn't get there. And then now this season, I think I'm going to get there. And plus, it's extended time. I think because of Combo Breaker, they're probably not going to make any big changes until. Till after that, I, I hope. How does it go? It says 30 days right now. I thought they rotated it with every DLC release. Is it every just DLC character? I think it's just the character now. Or No, because they did have a change with Janet, I thought. Maybe I'm misremembering that. But uh, I thought it said 30 days when I was on there earlier. Because I was expecting, are we, are we getting a new season on Tuesday with Movado? No, we are not. It's When it started, it was 46 days when... The new combat league started because I remember seeing that and thinking, "Wow, that's a that's a long ass time." Oh no, yeah, they always do that six weeks, right? Like about like six weeks. That's what okay. they've been trying to do. So I'm misremembering. And that, that six but weeks fine. got drawn out to eight weeks. That desync season, the peacemaker sort of thing, everything was pushed to the end of the month. Remember? They yeah, right, 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 the, right. The two weeks. You're right. I forgot about that. But yeah, okay. That aside, uh, pedantics aside, we'll be checking in and and for our combat league mental health and for everyone listening let me know how that's going for you too you know are are you getting tilted are, are people being jerks is there one pairing in particular you just can't defeat maybe we'll do a little uh little advice call a little uh ann landers kind of thing going on you're old enough to know what the heck that is <laughs> anyways what i want to say it's perfectly okay to like fighting games and to know more about them and maybe not be the best at like playing them that's totally like acceptable you know you can know a lot and you know uh enjoy that sort of thing even if you suck at making decisions in the moment like like me <laughs> but uh knowledge is it, power it's, it's okay it's, it's okay. okay and this is a safe space here we're all just here to get better and improve and talk about uh mortal Kombat. so that being said thanks for another a fantastic week uh hopefully we'll be back next week with some more stuff to chat about and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like because it really helps me out and subscribe if you haven't because we make new videos almost every single day. Hashtag Bonehawks and all that stuff and we'll see all you Bonehawks in the next video.
accept your death. 